Red Dragon Dojo. Hello, everyone. Welcome to HuddleCam HD Live. I'm Tess Protesto. So happy to be back in the studio today. If you're new here, we are live every Thursday, the first Thursday, excuse me, of the month at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm joined today with my trusty host, Mr. Paul Richards. Hey, I'm so happy to have you back here, Tess. And it really fits our topic today, which is hybrid work environments. So many of us have been working from home. Now with many people vaccinated in a safer work environment, people are starting to return to work, but we're still kind of maintaining our work from home locations that we've gotten so productive in. Speaking of that, maybe we should hang out a little bit closer for a little bit. What do you think? I think you're right. All right, let's get together. We are fully vaccinated now, so I feel like we're safe to, you know, be standing close to one another. It's great to have you back, Tess. Yay, I can touch you. Uh, so here we are in our hybrid work environment. We would love to know what that means to you. So Lindsay is actually listening to the comments. She's going to display them up on the screen when they, when they come. And uh, let us know what your hybrid work environment is like. Oh, wait, Lindsay. I have to show that. Look, there's Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Thank you, everyone, for joining in Zoom. If you have any questions, I see Julia's here, too. Hi, Julia. Yay. Hey, Julia. We're going to be sharing Hi, your Paul. studio today, too. Hi, Paul and Tess and everyone. Yes, um, 
<laughs> I, have, I have funny stories about hybrid working, so uh, uh, can't wait to share. <laughs> oh, great. I can't wait to hear that. I got some myself with the, with the little ones around. It's not easy. So yes, we want to hear from you. So make sure that you uh, give us all your comments and questions in the chat so we can continue things. So the plan today is to show you three unique work environments, starting with Tess. Yeah, we're going to show you a smaller, portable, easy system for the hybrid workspace, work from home, work in the office. We're going to show you a more complicated one with some multiple cameras, um, also uh, with a little bit more of an intense, you know, system for audio and uh, and computer and whatnot. And then we're going to show you a studio space with Mr. Stephen Haywood, our broadcast engineer. So we got a lot in store for you, and hopefully you can find some of this information today applicable to your own working environment and what is sort of happening now. We're seeing some people go back into the office more frequently. Now Mike is going to play these videos. Just make sure you hit the A button because we want to route the audio not only to our folks watching on the live stream, but also to anyone joining Zoom. So again, thank you for joining. If you're in Zoom, if you have a question, raise your hand. We want to want to hear from you guys as well. But Tess, we're going to start with your work from home. Congratulations. Here's some pictures that we Thanks. have, Tess, of what you put together. I thought it was so great. You actually put wallpaper in. Yeah, I put wallpaper in and you'll see in the video how I make things extremely portable because you'll also see in the video, this, this is a unique space in my house. I don't have a home office. If you could tell in the background, it's a children's room. It's my daughter's room. So uh, I'll tell you exactly why I did that and the technology I used. All right, let's take a look. What's up, guys? Welcome to HelloCam HD Cribs Office Edition. I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour of my home studio built for a hybrid workplace. Let's go. All right, guys, so here we are in my little workspace. I had a few issues that I had to overcome when deciding how to set up a workspace for working from home. Number one, I'm going to be hybrid. I'm going to be in the office some days and I'm going to be at home some days. So it needed to be portable. Number two, I have a small house. I don't have a dedicated office space. So where can I set up shop? Then I thought, hmm, I need to also keep an eye on my daughter 24 seven and try to work at the same time. So what I did was made my portable breakdownable, if that's a word, workplace in her bedroom. As crazy as it sounds, it totally works for me because I can set up shop, work, and watch her play at the same time. Let's take a look at the technology next. Oh. All right, here we are taking a look at the technology. It's actually pretty simple because it needs to be portable. It needs to be, uh, you know, not too much equipment. Let's take a look at the camera first. Obviously, this is going to be the most important. I am repping, excuse the mess in the background, the Huddle Cam HD Pro camera. This is going to be our USB 3 EPTZ camera powered over USB. There is a 4K HDMI option as well. I'm able to use this handy dandy little remote over here to set presets with the camera and to frame it out just how I like, which is with this nifty background. So it looks a little something like that when I'm on camera. Pretty nice. I also include at least one ring light, sometimes two. One of these small little clamp ring lights to give me some nice little uh, visual or lighting there. I also use a simple USB microphone. Forgot to mention also, I do have my camera tripod mounted if you couldn't see that, but I can just clamp it on my computer if I'm in a pinch. Last thing I wanted to share with you because I said this is a versatile room, I don't always want pictures of cameras on my daughter's room. Boom, Velcroed to the wall. There you have it for my technology. All of it is going to be pretty easy to break down, pack up and take with me to my work office whenever I need. That's about it, guys. Hope you guys found this hybrid little studio of mine helpful. Once again, this has been Huddle Cam HD Cribs. You don't got to go home, but you can stay here. Time to get out. Got to get back to work. Let's go. <laughs> so, Tess, you did quite a lot there to turn a space that I remember it was kind of manila. There was a lot of white walls. Mm -hmm. It didn't look great in the beginning. It was it was scary and a little bit. Well, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad, but you turned it into something that looked very professional 
and it's not even a dedicated office space. So congratulations. Thank you. It had to be fun. It had to be me. That's why we did the fun wallpaper, but added the pink uh, images of the cameras. So, and it had to be, you know, also aesthetically pleasing in my home. So that's something to consider as well. And hopefully you found some inspirative ideas of how you can make a space in your home multifunctional for work. Now, our next space is going to up the game a little bit here. Uh, Julia Sherwin, who I think is with us, she might be able to, to say hi and answer questions. Julia went through a similar process, but went maybe a little further um, by adding a microphone, by adding a PTZ camera. So, uh, Julia, you're actually joining from your space now, right? I am Paul. And for, for me, I do a lot of writing. So, you know, having additional monitors was really important for me because, um, you know, multitasking, right? I've got a Word document on one page, maybe a website on another. So having those additional displays was particularly important for me. And then, yes, I have a PTZ Optics camera here that you can see me uh, with. And we go uh, live once a month. Um, PTZ Optics has a new uh, show called Salt Talk. So I'm one of the hosts on there. So I wanted to make sure that I sort of had this, this home office, but also that home studio that would work well for live streams. So I do have a portable green screen. Um, typically, I just use this background that you see here because it's, a, it's my own bookshelf with all my own books. I used to be a radio host, so I have a ton of books here from interviews that I've done over the years. And um, this is an actual dedicated home office. Unlike Tess's space, um, we have a home office. My husband works across the hall. So he's, he's in our formal living room right now. And um, it kind of works out that way. I can shut the doors and sometimes I'm just sharing my space with, with our dog, so. Well, I can't wait to show the behind the scenes footage. Why don't we cut to that? And then maybe we can ask you a few questions. Sounds good. Office setup, it's worked out great during the pandemic. And um, by the way, this is a very desk. This is what uh, a flexible uh, desk so that I can stand up during the day to uh, give my back a little bit of a. Hey guys, Julia Sherwin here. I wanted to take you through my um, home office setup. As you can see, I have a. Um, a desk, of course, with a laptop and two additional monitors. You can actually see me. I have Zoom right up on my screen, so hi. Um, you're seeing me. I've got my cell phone, obviously, and then a 12x USB camera right here from PTZ Optics, so that works great for my Zoom meetings. Having these additional monitors is helpful when I'm in uh, a meeting. I can just look over and look at that other display. And then I have, you know, my main display right here. And that is actually where the PTCX uh, camera is being plugged into. It is a USB model, so it's very convenient. Right here is a Loom Cube. It's just a light that I can click on and off for additional conferencing light. And when we go live, it works really well to um, give me a little bit more, um, you know, light on my face. Here is a microphone. I used to use um, when I was on the radio uh, as a radio host, this is just a little windscreen here, but this is going into, and it's an XLR microphone going into this Presonus audio box here. Um, so it adapts, uh, it's a USB Presonus audio box. And that brings in my audio pretty easily. And um, I also have a portable green screen here. This came from Wraparound. So this actually like is just circular. It'll go right to the back of my chair. So I can use that or I can use my traditional bookshelf look depending on the background that I want to have for the particular meeting that I'm in. But overall, it's been a great setup here. As you can see, the PTZ Optics camera is mounted here on this clamp, which is uh, very convenient and stable. So it's capturing above my display so I can also use my display as like a teleprompter when I'm in a meeting and if I'm going live on um, a kind of a live stream or something like that. Also over here, it's a little messy, but you can see I have these um, cardboard cutouts that I can cover up my windows. If there's just too much light coming in, I can just cover them up like that. So 
that's it. There you have it. My home office setup. It's worked out great during the pandemic. And um, by the way, this is a very desk. This is what uh, a flexible uh, desk so that I can stand up during the day to uh, give my back a little bit of a, a break on those uh, Zoom calls. So wow. Julia, that was so interesting to see your setup. Also, right after Tess's to kind of see how people have different ways of accommodating flexibility, right? The work from a home environment is important. Uh, it's different for a mother of a two-year-old, one-year-old, than it is for a mother of three that are in their teens. So it was interesting to see. Uh, Julia, let me ask you um, first, I guess, what was uh, the most important thing that you could you take away? I saw you did a lot of different interesting um, kind of tweaks and things that are, are different, like those uh, shades for the for the yeah, very creative with the cardboard windows. cutouts. I like it. I had my my personal helper, aka the husband, help me with those. So um, it's great, you know, if you if you live with somebody who's handy, um, and we always getting Amazon shipments. So there's there's no shortage of boxes around. So um, for the most part, though, I. I haven't had to use them too much. I do have the loom cube on right now. And I am in, um, in a, like in a downstairs office in the front of the house. So, um, so far the light's been, you know, it's been in my favor because it's, it's over there. It's facing me. But wow. to your question, what's the most important thing? I would say, you know, we've all learned over this past 14 months the most important thing is gonna be your audio in your traditional meetings, obviously. You need to be heard. The, the video is, is sort of secondary, but you know, stepping up your game with great video, the integrated um, camera in your, in your laptop or desktop, it's just not gonna be what you want. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. And then the PTZ Optics camera has you know, presets. So you know, I can, I can play around with it and hit different um, presets and show you different parts of my office just by, you know, doing that. Um, can even show you, it's, it's not on a very fast, uh, but then you can see out into my hallway there. If you can peek over there through those doors, that's where my husband works. That's my, my front window there. And then I look back to the preset that I have set to, um, to point to me. So it's uh, been a lot of fun playing with this little remote control for somebody like myself, who's I'm not super technical, but um, it's very, very easy to handle that. Cool. Well, it, it's been so interesting to see, you know, you know, Tess and you both having different adaptations. Everyone's adapting. We're trying to adapt to a change in our lifestyle and our work place. And now we are going to start a little bit talking about the hybrid workplace uh, here at HuddleCam HD and what it's like to return to the office and have modern video communications technologies available to allow for these hybrid work uh, spaces to exist. Companies need to return to work and do the work that they do, but they also now need to accommodate the flexibility of the hybrid work from home model. So video communications have never been more important. And we are at HuddleCam HD, obviously have a lot of great products. I wanted to show off just a few, um, Michael, that I have here on the table to talk a little bit about some of the video communication spaces that can help in person in the office um, technologies. One that uh, is really popular right now is the Simple Track 2. And you saw this camera actually in use uh, when Tess walked over here. And this is um, a great camera for lecture capture and distance learning. Um, so this is like a, one of my favorites just because it's, it's automatically controllable. But a really simple one that someone's going to win today is just the Huddle Cam HD webcam. Oh, we're, we're actually going to give push away? off the giveaway till next month. Okay, let's make sure we have it on the okay. site, unfortunately. So we're going to we're going to give this away next for the first Thursday of next month. Um, <laughs> but this is just a simple eighty nine dollar webcam, but it does have a five year warranty from AutoCam, and it's a step up from just a built in webcam in a computer. And you got to got to see you also got to see Tess using a Huddlecam HD Pro. Here and she these is. Are, 
the 4K cameras uh, that come in either a USB or an NDI camera option. And we're going to look a little bit at these cameras today. That's my favorite one for the hybrid model because it has the it, it is. but you can take it home and then you can bring it into the office. Mm -hmm. And I was just going to say, I've actually left that one in the office because I am going in a couple of days a week. So um, you didn't see that one here in my home studio because I'm trying to cut down on the things that I'm carrying between my house and the office. So so that that is uh, located in my office now. I see. That's an interesting concept that you brought up, Julia. It's like, a lot of people, I think, have invested in technology for their home workspace, whether it's a Loom Cube or a microphone or a new camera. Um, some of that technology, you might say, you know, it was nice to have three webcams during you know, the pandemic because I wasn't sure what I needed and I wanted to have Zoom capabilities. I wanted to show things off. Uh, but now you're thinking, huh, I'm starting to spend more time at the office. Is my office equipped? with the video communications technologies that we need to support a modern hybrid workforce. And um, so then just looking at a few of these products that I have in front of me, here's a simple one called the Huddle Cam HD Go. That and would be another good one for hybrid for sure. This is a great one. It's just USB plug and play. Um, it's 1080p. It's only $299. And Huddle Cam, if you look at our website, obviously has, we just wanted to take a few out. Before we take you guys into something that is going to be very exciting, very fun, and how practical is it for the everyday home office? Well, you be the judge. You let us know. But our next presentation is going to take you into Stephen Haywood's live streaming studio, which is located in his basement. So he doesn't have to leave his house to get here. He just goes down a few stairs and boom. He's in his live streaming studio, so I find it very exciting. I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments. Let's go ahead and show Steven's video. Okay, my work from home setup, Paul, uh, consists of, uh, I have a 52 inch TV that's 4K that I keep above. A lot of times I use that for Zoom meetings, uh, especially if folks are sharing uh, desktops, I'm able to follow along with any kind of changes to the product information. I also have a PTZ Optics uh, USB connected there. Um, I have a 49-inch Samsung curved display. Now, this is a very unique display because it allows me to connect two PCs or two Macs or whatever, a Mac, a PC in my case, to this monitor and have one monitor but have double display. So this side here is PC, this side here is Mac. So I can, you know, get the best of both worlds while working. Um, I also have a MacBook Pro here. A lot of times uh, a Zoom call will be set up on there to run to the studio side, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, I have a Persona 16 4.2 AI mixer, which controls the audio here in the, the cockpit area, if you will, my, my daily work area. Or and it also controls it over in the studio. Um, my mouse and keyboard. I do do some gaming, so off hours I'm gaming up on that screen. Here I have a Discord chat that that monitor is vertical, and that's all that that literally does. Um, but I got these these lights here, which are great for Zoom calls. You know, for thirty bucks on Amazon, they're great. They're they're dimmable, so you can control you know the brightness of it as well so it, it's a really really good option now over here is my home studio as you can see here I've got some studio lighting uh, right behind here I've got a bunch of monitors here which we'll take a look at here in a little bit of what they do I've also got monitors down here this is a program out monitor if somebody's sitting in the studio and there's another program out monitor right there so I do a lot of broadcasting and arcade um, live shows on my own so that's why you're going to see a lot of that i have a key slash fill light that's up here on the side that uh, to light me up when i'm sitting here in the chair i also have some track lighting if you see um, that kind of helps highlight myself or my guest in studio hair light um, right here we have the tricasters interface it's how i control the tricaster i've got a mouse and keyboard for it i've also got a stream deck here that controls macros to the TriCaster. I've got the PTZ Optics Super Joy. Um, I have a touchscreen PC 
which this enables me to access calls for the live to air system, the neural net system that I have for bringing guests on. I could just simply touch them as they come in and send them to the live to air system that's over here, which is my, my guest system, if you will. I also have this mini seven inch monitor, which is connected to my SuperJoy, which allows me to preview any of the cameras that are inside SuperJoy. Um, I have a Heil PR40 microphone. I go back and forth between this if I want really high-end quality mic or if I want something, um, you know, for podcasting, I use that mic. Um, I also have an over-the-ear mic, uh, which is down there. That's the receiver. That's my in-ear monitor receiver, um, and I have the in-ear monitors right there. Um, this, this computer here, this is just an older MacBook Air. This actually is my comment computer, so it allows me to select the comments and put them into the TriCaster um, right up here on that lower third. It gives me the ability to, you know, highlight any kind of comments. This is vMix, is uh, vMix Social, and then I just bring comments in. It's right in front of me. And then this computer, which kind of fell asleep right now, uh, this computer is the one that I use for websites. Um, when I want to bring a website up into the TriCaster to show somebody's website, um, I simply, you know, pull it up there. Out here, you'll notice I have some, I have a PTZ Optics, uh, 20x NDI camera right there. I'm going to try to get no glare on it for you guys. I have a preview program TV. Both of these, this TV is a 27 inch. Uh, and then I have, well, it's a monitor, but this is a monitor here. This also has chat, and I zoom it in so I can see the chat when I'm looking at cameras from the vMix. It's essentially the same thing as what you saw earlier. I have another 12x, um, oh, I'm sorry, 20x. NDI PTZ camera for my guest or another shot and then I've got a preview program as well as a clock there and then I have a simple track too which tracks me uh, inside the studio now up in front of me I also have an X keys which I use um, uh, a program um, to control vMix with it this is a wirecast X keys um, but I use a, a program to control it up here called Central Control, and that allows me to control vMix with it. And you can see I'm playing reruns here, and then I have whatever's live for the TriCaster here, and then all my shots in, in, in Composer. Um, and here you can see this is the live to air. I can do four live callers for right now, simultaneously bring them in just like a Skype. This is my camera feed from the webcam that's right above it so the person knows that they're on and then this is my return video right here I have this is my guest computer so if somebody's sitting here um, it guest with that other camera there I can uh, pull that up so they can see comments pull up websites and then pull that into the TriCaster with NDI and you'll notice up here I have a fold down muslin that I can put as a nice backdrop so you don't see the rack of gear um, I just pull that down and I just use the uh, shower curtain that is adjustable to go from the foam across so it works really well. Here's my rack, I, uh, my encoding machine running vMix and Wirecast and OBS. I run all the different softwares on this because it's a great box to just have that. I have the Telstream Wirecast gear box. This is the 420. Um, I also uh, have an SDI. Uh, router system where I can route SDI which will eventually be going to all NDI but for now that's what I have right here this is 16 input 16 output this is just the control bay down here is the live to air computer this is the actual router the SDI router uh, this is where all of the SDI cabling hooks up to and then I just have a power bay here that turns everything on within the rack some fans here and then the TriCaster 460 with Advanced Edition 3 software on it. That is right there. And then you can't see it, but you can probably hear back there, I have some fans that keep the air cool for the um, Wirecast gearbox. And up here, I have a NDI 20X uh, PTZ Optics camera. I got the keyboards and mice for the respective machines here to activate. Now here, a lot of you guys maybe think I'm sitting in front of a green screen. I'm actually not. I'm sitting in front of a 52-inch 4K display that has a motion 
video background so I can essentially change it to whatever I want and when you look at the screen here it looks like I'm standing in front of you know a, a really nice high-end studio so it's all smoke and mirrors from that perspective but everything in my studio has a battery backup all my networking everything is under there for certain pieces but I have battery backups and I'll show you down here inside this cabinet I have a battery backup right inside there and that essentially will um, keep everything uh, going and um, keeps keeps power to it if we lose power so that's about it back to you guys in the studio. all right we're back thank you Stephen um, we're ready to answer questions but really quickly I am going to show you guys something I think is really cool this is my smartphone and it's running an app called the NDI camera app and is Wi-Fi connected to our live streaming system. So we actually got some pretty good video from it. And I also have a stabilizer. So, so I, I thought, thought, hey, maybe I can show you guys. There's audio with it too. That's why we had a little, I can show you our work environment here. Um, this is Mike's new setup. He's got three monitors. Mike, you want to tell us why you have three monitors? Yeah, so we have three monitors so that I can watch uh, YouTube and I can do this whole show and I can chat with Julia on Zoom. That is so awesome. Hope you guys can hear that because I know the microphone's not quite on mic. But look at that. He's got he's looking at YouTube and Facebook, the live streams. He's got his video production software. He's got his Zoom session there where he has um Julia pinned in full screen. You can change the gallery, but we're actually asking Lindsay, who's our co-producer, to actually manage the gallery. So if we keep Julia pinned, I want to show this. It's kind of cool. Lindsay, why don't you cut to gallery view? And Lindsay is controlling this monitor and this monitor. And we found it's very handy to have a second producer. So, uh, Lindsay, can you show a comment on the screen? I just want to show that as an example. And then we'll show how Lindsay's connected to the studio as well. But Lindsay has full control of this monitor and this monitor. And we're going to, she, one of the cool things that she should be able to do, I don't know if we're having an issue, is pull up a comment. Uh, there we go. A comment from Steven saying, Steven is to great. Steven. So much knowledge. His basement. Oh, it's to Steven. Steven's great. So much knowledge. His basement looks like a technician's playground, similar to mine. Let's see your work environment, Tess. Sure. I've got the vMix social up here so I can cue comments as well. Steven's getting some questions about his awesome studio and the need yeah. for central air in there. I'm sure. <laughs> now, Tess, let's try this for a second. Go ahead and s hit the send button. And it should send it up to the screen. That's not working, but that's okay, because we'll just do a little bit of live troubleshooting, and we'll show uh, outside here. Love some here. live troubleshooting. It wouldn't be one of our shows without some. And I'll show. Let me know if my microphone cuts out. This is my office here. And then we have Lindsay, too. That's my work environment. And this is Lindsay's. Lindsay, can I see the vMix social app? Not that uh, web interface, but the actual app itself. Yep, that one. So I think we need to, oh yeah, it says social large, but hit trigger overlay one. Okay, that'll allow it to overlay on top as soon as we send something. Why don't we just try that real quick? And. Oh, wait, it did, because you have layer four. See that little layer four button? Oh, there you go. Yeah, you had layer four enabled on top of layer one. Anyway, I won't, that's fine. Great, thank you, Lindsay. We even have another person working over here. And everyone's obviously vaccinated, if you're wondering. So, that is our work environment. Welcome back. Welcome back. All right. So uh, this is a pretty cool camera shot, huh? I mean, that's pretty smooth. 
video. It, Julia, how does that look coming through Zoom? I got to unmute her. Here she is. It looks great. Because when we output the video to Zoom, you know, Zoom only has uh, 720p, I think, it, usually. Well, now you can do high def. Yeah, there's a new HD mode now. So you think it looks pretty good? I do. Now, obviously, we went way beyond the typical hybrid work environment. We focused a little bit more on, on the studio aspects of it. So, you know, don't let Steven's video intimidate you. That was, I guess, the, the whole reason we showed three different tiers. Um, you know, Tess and I, on certainly on the, on the low end compared to what Steven does. But, um, you know, it, it, the key is you, you want to be comfortable and you want it to work. And um, yesterday when I went into the office and I unplugged everything, I realized I, I didn't I, I didn't go to my regular location. I ended up working out of the kitchen, which was really funny. And I, I, I sorely missed my PTZ optics camera <laughs> and my home setup. So, um, you know, you really have to get into a groove. But the statistics are showing right now that people are are looking to get back into the office around two days a week. So, you know, you might have more of a main office, which may be your home, and then you want to have some of those, you know, portable pieces to get you some, to get you into the office. And and the HuddleCam, you know, offering that that EPTZ webcam, for instance, has has the microphone in as part of that. Um, that's particularly helpful too, so you don't have to worry about bringing in something else. Yeah, it's it's exciting to me, Julia, um, that to finally see the you know, economy come back strong, the jobs, you know, um, reports looking good, and then wanting to return to work because they're more confident in vaccinations and things of that nature that can keep people safe. Uh, I find it, I find it very uh, optimistic and exciting because we've all been using Zoom so much and that's fine. Um, but you only, you know, there's something missing, I think, from a completely uh, work from home environment if you work in a larger team in a larger company. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it, obviously. People are being very productive. I think it's very innovative for companies like Microsoft and others to allow folks to uh, work from home forever. Yeah. Um, but that is a big topic. I could We could talk about it for hours, and it is a lot of opinions. Uh, if that was, you know, how that's gonna pan out over a long period of time. Um, but yeah, I mean, we have time for Q&A. So if anyone has any questions about something we've shown today, now is your time to ask and we would be happy to answer your questions. I can start things off with John. John okay. wants to know if it would make sense to take the audio from the mic and plug it into the PTZ camera to eliminate audio sync issues. That's a good and idea. The line in. Um, so yeah, so let's start. let's start there. So what camera are we talking about? because there are different cameras uh, here today. I think he commented during Julia's session, during her video. So he probably is referring to the USB PTZ camera. Okay. Yeah, so, so for one thing, um, with USB connected devices, um, generally the audio will remain in sync. Um, so that's good. It, uh, if you have a USB camera and you have a USB microphone, it should be uh, pretty much in sync. There are tools you can use to adjust the latency, and a lot of times people will add a delay to the audio just a little bit to make sure that um, everything is perfectly in sync. In fact, we do that in our studio here. We add just a little bit of latency to our audio. If your camera offers a 3.5 millimeter audio input, and I will show the camera that Julia is using in her studio. I'll just put it right here, Mike. I don't know if that will help to show it. But it has a USB connection and it has a 3.5 millimeter audio input. Um, do we, I think we have a shot of this. And the 3.5 millimeter audio input takes a line level audio input. And what it does. There you go. There we go. It embeds that audio directly into the USB output, uh, which is selectable as your microphone. So that is a, a solid option to pair the audio and video together. 
So I like that idea a lot. It's definitely possible. The audio can also be embed into any RTSP, RTMP, SRT, and there's one more that I'm forgetting, NDI, audio feed, and then the HDMI as well. We get that question quite a lot. If you also are looking for something simple with the USB function and you're looking for audio at the same time, this is our Huddlecam 3XA. There's also a 10XA version as well. That's in optical zoom. But if you like the robotic pan tilt zoom cameras, this is definitely going to be a good one because it has dual microphone inputs and it's USB 2.0. So it's super easy to connect and, um, and, and power. And we also had the non-audio version of that camera, which is the 3X. And this also does come in a 10X optical zoom as well. And that is also USB 2.0. So those are some other options to consider if you're looking for a step above the webcams, but you're not quite ready to manage SDI or NDI or Ethernet capabilities. Great. Let's so see. that was a good question. Uh, I see there, I think there's a couple more um, questions coming in. Drake says, awesome work in progress progress makes my students know that even the pros have to fix things on the fly. I'm not sure which part he was referring to. That must <laughs> I have... was like, which part? I <laughs> yeah, think it was Julia's video. No, it was six minutes ago. So uh, it had to had to have been either. Steve? Oh, probably us when we were <gasps> fixing with Lindsay. Fixing the, the vMix call. Yes. And uh, Tess, when you mention a comment, you can feel free to show it on the screen. The Facebook comments were integrating with oh, vMix okay. Social and now they, they fell off. And the other comment was from Zoom. And our next question okay. is from Zoom as well. Um, Rick wants to know, will the USB huddle cams recognize PTZ pre presets from vMix? Not these models because they don't have the IP functionality. Um, they're just USB cameras. Although, Tess, what? vMix did release UVC controls. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. So, uh, Mike. Good point. And, and I mean, if, if you guys want, we can actually do a live demo of that because Mike has a Huddlecam HD Pro. And you know what? To be honest, the easiest way to wow. show something on vMix is actually my my uh, little camera that I have here. I'm happy to show that if that's what you guys want to see. That's cool. I haven't seen that yet, so I'd totally be interested to test that out. Um, so, Mike, if you want to cut to my um, my camera here, we can show that. Um, here we go. I'm really liking this thing. Here we go. Sweet. So over to Mike's workstation here. Again, Mike's really loving these three monitors. He, this is like Mike's dream. <laughs> no one else gets to play with this. Um, but over here, Mike, we have, so basically we have the Huddlecam HD Pro, okay? And it's connected, this is kind of, oh, there we go, connected via USB to our vMix computer. And this computer here, running vmix obviously um there's the feed and um why don't we open the huddle cam hd input which is right there and yeah just drag that over here okay so here's the ptz camera section and it's actually not connected because i don't think we use it very often but if you hit the drop down menu and you choose uvc uvc is universal video codec now you can see that Mike should be able to zoom in wow. and out and have full PTZ it's control. It's just the same as, as the other um, PTZ control. Yeah, it is pretty much. And you can change the speeds. You can add a tally light, which is something we didn't talk about yet. I wanted to show the tally lights for a minute, Mike, uh, because that's something I feel like in some work environments makes it easier. So there you go. Now, does it do the pre-TZ presets, Mike? That was his question. The, and the answer is yes. The answer is yes, because I will tell you something. Here, hit this connect real quick. Zoom all the way out. We'll zoom all the way out. I'll tell you why. And hit this connect. And then hit device type and choose virtual PTZ. And I'll tell you why. So hit the virtual PTZ, oh, the first one. Yep. And then hit, it's a 10. Now, this is the amount of optical zoom you want to add. Just do 3x. It's fine. Or 4x. So basically what this does is it allows vMix to bring in the full 4K video 
And then you just zoom inside of that. And I've found that that's the better way to connect. So to answer your question, use the virtual PTZ camera option and then you'll get better results. Um, And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a preferred. Now, um, over here, I just wanted to show something. This is called a tally light. And throughout the show in our studio, I have been looking at these lights because sometimes I'm not sure which camera to look at. Um, And so you can see here um, that this camera light will turn green when it's in preview. And if you cut to it, Mike, it'll turn red and then you can overlay the camera. And then they can see it on, I believe, if you overlay the um, the mobile. You can just hit the four, the layer four and it'll just pop right on top. Do we get it? He's looking for the camera input. Go ahead. There she is. You got it? Okay. So that's the tally light when it's on. And just keep keep it there for a minute because I just want to show. I'll be, you know, pretty far away from that camera. Uh, I'm all the way over here. And I can see that clearly. I don't know how well you can see it. Um, it's definitely clearer in person. It's much clearer in person. Why don't we cut to this camera over here, Mike? underneath this the overlay and then they'll be able to see the light turn on over there if you cut to that cross shot basically from from where i am there i have a a cross shot and a straight shot and the cross shot so you can see that light turning on there i mean i can see it clearly i think the camera has a little bit of a hard time seeing it but that it turns off and on anyway just not necessarily work from home it's more of a hybrid thing Lindsay, go ahead and overlay the questions for us, please, so we can get to some of these here. Hisham says, can you get all output at once from the, the cameras, the NDI, HDMI, and USB, so that I can get each output sent to a different system? Yes, you can. And that's one of the great things about the cameras is that they are simultaneous, the video outputs. So yes, you can use NDI, you can use HDMI, you can use USB. Um, What I will say is that the USB PTZ Optics camera models uh, will require an NDI upgrade license in order to add NDI. The SDI camera models essentially are sold with NDI uh, built in. So when you're looking on the PTZ Optics website, uh, it is the USB, there is the SDI, and then there's the NDI. The USB models require an upgrade in order to add NDI capabilities. James wants to know if the PTZ cameras can be integrated with conference systems like Sennheiser or Bosch. Oh, that's a great question. And it's something that we've been thinking about here. In fact, another conference uh, system is from Yamaha, Mm -hmm. has the Odessia system. And these conference systems are great because they allow you to have the echo cancellation and audio, in-room audio processing. It's very high quality for an audio meeting. We all know audio is so important. The PTZ camera provides the video side where they, it, it allows you to use the optical zoom and have the camera presets. And there are even ways to integrate PTZ camera controls with many different automation products. I'm not sure if it's every single audio system. Yeah, we haven't specifically that I am aware of done any um, integration work with those organizations. But you can pretty much assume, especially with the USB cameras, that they would play nice together. If they accept a USB camera, you got to look at the um, whether there's even a computer included in those systems. I'm not sure. Um, But whatever, you know, outputs those computers accept. To be honest, um, like on like one easy way to do it might be to, I know vMix isn't the solution for everything, but technically you could bring the audio input of the audio system that you're using, the conference system, into vMix. And vMix has the ability to have triggers. So it's like, if the audio is this high, you know, zoom the camera in. There's different things that you can do. 
Um, but I don't think we have any off the shelf like plugin or integration for conference systems. Ian is on Zoom. Okay, there's two. Kelly wants uh, a once over of the HC Go again. Okay. Uh, just a quick little review of that. And then we can go to Lane's comment. So the HuddleCam HD Go test, why don't you just Where's pull up the uh, web page so that you can read a few specs off that I might not memorize off the top of my head, maybe. Okay. Um, here it is here, and I think we might be able to get a close-up of it, Mike. Um, it really only has three buttons, which is, which is really nice, because that's all you need. Um, it literally has mute, volume up, and volume down. The um, I was looking for the cable, for, the USB cable for this. Um, there is a little USB cable at the bottom. It's a USB micro, and it comes with a, I think it's a 12-foot cable to connect it to your computer. The, it has, oh, sorry, did you have it, like, perfect? There, there's the USB cable port. Yay! And it, there's, like, a custom little turn so it stays fl flush with when you put it down on the table like that. And then, um... There's a LED indication light inside of, it kind of looks like the neck of the device. And it will turn green when it's on, and it will turn red when it is muted. So really there is just, you know, that one mute button. So you just mute yourself, and you know it turns red. It also mutes all audio going to Zoom or whatever conference software you're using. And then... Uh, you can unmute it and just go up and down with volume because this is a camera, a microphone, and a speakerphone. So it really is an all-in-one device where this is all you need. Plug it into a computer of any type, whether it's a Chromebook, okay, or a Mac or a PC. I'm pretty sure it works with Chromium tests. It's been a little bit of it's been a little while since I've looked at the specs here. It has a 360-degree speakerphone. 110 degree wide angle lens, which is kind of one of the big selling points to it because you could, you know, put it at the end of the table and fit quite a few people in frame. And it also has a three year warranty, which is cool with that camera. I pulled up the data sheet and it doesn't specify Chrome. Yeah, Chrome. But does it say, does it say Chrome? Hold on. Let me I, go back you should to the say web. it definitely works with all Mac and PC computers. Not, should we be looking at this on the data sheet or is this something? Uh, scroll up just a hair. Um, yeah, it should say com all the compatibilities, but um, yeah, 30 frames a second, 1080p, one single USB connection to the device. And then, of course, there's a little tiny bit of manual pan tilt um, just for a little bit of adjustability. I found that just nice because if you are close, yeah, it's just tilt. The pan, you just you physically have to turn it if you so choose. It's very wide angle. So like Tess, we used it. We were at like a, like a lunch meeting, remember? Yep. We were just out. We were just hanging out. It's a small little device. It's tiny. It's durable. It comes with a neoprene case. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> we both, I, did, I felt you looking I at thought me. it did. I can't remember now. <laughs> I just take this thing and I put it in my to-go We bag. haven't seen it out of the box since they added, they, since the discussion changes. of the case coming into play. So we yeah. don't hold us to that 100%. I apologize, it's but it's, it, I definitely put throw this in my case, in my briefcase, and it just got a USB connection. It plugs right in, and it's pretty loud, too, if you need it to be. Okay, the other question we had is, is it, the, is it only the HuddleCam HD Pro webcam that does PTZ? The HuddleCam HD webcam uses UVC. When will this be able to PTZ? Ah, that is a good question. Uh, the, the, and the answer is... That that camera, the Huddlecam HD webcam, was not designed for EPTZ. Uh, a firmware update may make that available, and I hope that it will. Uh, but this this Huddlecam HD webcam is designed to be wide enough angle that you can get very close and very high quality video images with this. And the Huddlecam HD Pro is the larger resolution camera that includes the EPTZ. And that's so, kind of what we were thinking there. If you do want the smaller form factor of an EPTZ webcam, the HuddleCam HD webcam has a sister camera, the PTZ Optics webcam, which is not that quite wide an angle, um, but it does have an EPTZ app. That's kind of a little bit of a secret with that camera. We don't talk about it too much, but the PTZ Optics webcam does 
have that feature. But if you really are looking for dedicated electronic pan tilt zoom, you would probably want to consider the Pro because it does have that 4K EPTZ function. So, um, which model of the? Okay, I think this is. All right, Hisham says, which model of the Huddle Cam HD cameras do you recommend for a home office to use with H USB and HDMI output? Oh. The camera you were just showing. Definitely the Huddle Cam HD Pro. If we show the back of this again, Mike had a really good shot of this. Uh, it has both HDMI and USB. Um, to be honest, that's the way I've always used it. Um, the one thing to know is that the USB is required for power. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't just plug HDMI in. The USB 3.0 will give you video and control. Um, so there's a Huddle Cam HD app that's available with that. We showed it working with vMix today as well. There's a couple different ways to control that. You can control the camera with your smartphone if you are using the latest Huddle Cam HD Pro app uh, that has a web server. I need to upgrade mine because... Um... Yeah, that'd be nice for you. So I can use the app because I've been relying on the remote. But I think I need to upgrade my app to make that well, work. Well, that's a good point. It does come with a remote. So yeah, Mike. That's what most people use. <laughs> and that is our EPTZ webcam. So you do get that PTZ functionality. I think that Mike, covers you got to turn your questions. light on. Mike has one of the lights. Oh, you have a Loom Cube. Mike has a Loom Cube. Yeah, you got to hold it for like I think it's five seconds, maybe. Light up go. that beautiful face. There you there go. There he is. I'm guessing you don't like to have that light shining in your face while you're trying to produce the show. Only if you really need it. Well, thank you guys so much for taking this ride with us. Oh, what resolution is it? The USB outputs 1080p, but the HDMI does output 4K. No, they're both. Sean. Aren't they both 4K? I thought it was just via HDMI, but you would know better than I would. Bring up the spec sheet. Oh my god! Now it should be it should be both. That is my understanding. Julia, do you have an opinion on that? It's four K, and then um, for the for the the big image is four K, right? And then yeah, but using... well, okay. So I think it's using the four K image for the USB to EPTZ. Okay, but that's you can possible. actually get the yeah okay 4K image. I, I actually okay I know that I know what the real the real answer is. Here we go. <laughs> oh my. So gosh. here's the real answer, which is not is is it, better than okay. So so HDMI. Okay, I think it's HDMI 2.0. I'd like for you to bring the spec sheet up. I'm HDMI 2.0 is 4K capable. Um, now, it might be HDMI 1.2. That's why I'm just asking Tess to double fact check me live for a second here. But the Huddle Cam HD Pro HDMI could do 4K video, 4K at 30 frames a second. The USB output is UVC compatible, meaning it can negotiate the resolution to output. And that is what one of the reasons why electronic pan tilt zoom is so powerful hdmi 1.4 hdmi 1.4 4k at 30 and 4k at 30 over usb 2.0 and 3.0 4k 30 over usb 2.0 and 3.0 you were right and the camera is uvc capable so that it can negotiate lower resolutions and uh because like zoom doesn't need 4k so if you connect to this Zoom certified camera, by the way, we did get the Zoom certified. This is why I'm remembering, so that Zoom can connect at whichever resolution it requires. And the great part is, you still have access to the 4K resolution, but in order to uh, use it, you just need to zoom in uh, and pan and tilt and zoom. And that's what makes this so great because you don't need to maybe use 4K, but you still have access to the digital pixels, if you will. Phew. Well done. We do have one more that I'd like to cover from Patrick. Uh, Patrick is, works with language interpreters, sign language interpreters, excuse me, and often needs two people in the shot for auto tracking. Mm. What do, would you suggest auto framing camera for that scenario? Yep. It's, it is almost the exact same technology, but used differently. Um, this is the simple track too, but literally, it Hit is basically the you. same as the Huddle View. We do have one here. So the Huddle Cam Simple Track 2 and Huddle View 
I don't think the huddle view is on too. It's just the, the, the very first huddle view are very yes. similar cameras. Uh, there's some minor differences. The huddle view is designed to frame subjects in view. The simple track is meant to track a single presenter. So the issue becomes, what if there's two, three, four people in the same shot? Well, the huddle view camera uh, has a 12x optical zoom as opposed to a 20x optical zoom because in a lot of these scenarios, people are a little closer to the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, now, 12x optical zoom is still a considerable amount. Uh, you could still be 20, 30, 40 feet away from the camera. Uh, but instead of tracking left to right, what it does is it groups moving objects together. And so if the two moving objects, the two presenters start to move away further, the camera zooms out and it, it widens the frame. And if the two subjects come together, it zooms in and moves closer. That technology is very exciting, actually. It's come a long way. And we have a major announcement coming for the Simple Track 2, which is, I can't say, Tessa get mad at me. Well, I mean, yeah, we should probably wait. But something very exciting, you can maybe guess if you've been around with us for a while. Can't say. What Matt didn't say that we really did have to keep it secret, but I know Julia would prefer us to wait for a well, I, I was, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily know. I mean, if it's there, it's there, right? Let's just let's just save the announcement. I so leave the whistle blowing to Paul. We would like for there to be other newsworthy items coming soon. I believe, that but works. thank you for that question. We really do need to wrap it up because yep. we have the PTZ Optics live stream starting in one, about one half hour, which we need to prepare for. So thank you. I just want to thank everyone for, for tuning in this week. If we didn't get to your questions, send them via email, and we will try to answer them there. Um, that's all, right, Tess? That's it. We will see you next what? first Thursday of July. <laughs> what email address do you want people to send questions to, guys? Uh, Paul. <laughs> not me. No, I just can't. I'm totally no, no, kidding. No, no, no. Send it, it to test.protesto at hellocamhd.com. Happy to help. All right. Tess is going to, you can All right, I'll, test, test. I'll put that in the Zoom chat. <laughs> you did good today, Tess. We had the HDMI 1.2 and everything. You did good too. I looked at that on the data sheet. But I was wrong with that, actually. <laughs> so, and I was wrong with the UVC with vMix. It's okay. Rusty. That's Better what, luck that, next it's time. It's all about learning. That's what I, That's why, by the way, my final comment will be, it's important to come back to the office from time to time for people to collaborate and, and learn that VMix has updates. <laughs> and it's funny, the small things that you learn at, when you work with people uh, in person, which was, used to be the normal, and now it is different, right? And that's fine. But um, I don't know. I think it's an example that you learned something extra today. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, Love that's it. our show today. Thank we'll you, guys. We'll see you in July, guys. Thanks so much. See ya. Bye, guys.